Good afternoon. Uh, today we've got uh, Len Bosak from a company called XKL. He's the CEO there, but also Len was the co-founder of Cisco Systems. So Len, thank you very much for coming along talking to us today. And good afternoon. Um, perhaps you can tell us a little bit more about yourself and about your company. Well, as you say, uh, Cisco was an interesting adventure. Someone had to do it. Uh, we were successful in, in changing people's attitudes about data transmission and produced what is today a large, successful industrial company. It's a lot less fun when you're that size. When the company's small, it's quite exciting and, and yes, it's a lot of work, but it, it, can, it has its moments of being fun. But after that was done, uh, we, you know, I was looking for other things to do and today I run XKL, and we make fiber optic data transmission equipment. When you get your dark fiber, we're a good thing to put on the end. Okay, and where, where, where's XKL based? We're located in Kirkland, Washington. Of course, the optics industry supply chain is throughout the world, but we actually do assemble our and test our products there. Okay, and uh, I've got some questions for you today, uh, Len, and, and uh, you can answer those for us. Um, You've, uh, you've argued from the beginning of XKL that your objective is to simplify fiber optic networks. So to what extent do you think that this has been achieved? I think we've succeeded really quite well. If you have a typical mid-size ISP or enterprise data network, you already have routers and switches. You have to run those and the network is what something that's very important to you. Given you do that, our equipment fits right in with that intellectual and data model. You deal with the same management systems that you deal with for equipment you already have. It looks a lot like the equipment that you already run. And we have made choices in the optical system that simplify the design and operation. And we have given up, because of that, certain very exotic applications. We've never found an enterprise or ISP that needed those. So we think this trade-off is successful and we think we have succeeded in making the equipment a smooth integration with an enterprise or ISP data network. Good. And also, uh, I have a question for you about connectivity. It's, it's, connectivity is clearly a factor in the operation of, of a data center. How, how do you see that changing in the future? it becomes ever more important. Right now, if you don't have good dark fiber connectivity in your data center, you're not going to get really very many customers. So the ideal data center, of course, has two isolated high voltage feeds in two corners and two completely separable route fiber feeds at two other corners. The best of the data, center, data centers are carrier neutral. If customers in the data center want access to dark fiber, they can get it and get it without any sort of exorbitant standing charge to get through that last five meters of conduit or anything of that sort. So the conductivity, conductivity, connectivity is an absolute essential. Okay. You've also been identified um, by Network World recently as one of the top 20 people who changed the technology industry. And, and we where, thank them. <laughs> where, where do you see the next big thing or big change? Well, the far future crystal ball is always a bit cloudy. Uh, but in the short run, for about the last 10 years, we've been running our fiber optic networks at about 10 gigabits per carrier. That's been the sort of magic speed that's been convenient, economical, and operationally useful. 40 gig is available, but when it came out, it turned out to be rather harder than people expected. And part of that was a, a bit of um, over-optimism about their ability to overcome real fundamental physical things. Still, there's now a psychological barrier to it, even though you could today do better at 40 gig. Well, next stop is 100 gig, and the industry will transition to that fairly soon. It's not quite here yet. You do get some test networks built, but 
The folks who built the standards, and I, I have a lot of respect for, for any standard organization, there's a lot of, of effort that goes into getting people whose commercial interests differ to agree. Yet, if you have a CRS-1, or CRS-3 now, in one place, and you want to hook to a, one in another place, what happens to your data getting from one to the other is pretty complicated. And one thing that the different standards organizations didn't think through is from a user's point of view what was involved. So it's not pretty. That presents a challenge for uh, those of us in the industry, and, and we've met it, we, we can do it, but it's not pretty. Okay. So, as far as technology goes, we're going to get you 100 gig per carrier. But right now, today, it's not a benefit in cost per bit per second. And in my view, it won't be until about 2015. 10, 10 gig carriers today are completely dominant in cost. As far as what will happen in the short term, ironically, it appears that a very old technology, the optical equivalent of something used in the T-carrier network, is going to make possible economical 25 gig per carrier transmission. And I think if you watch, uh, watch the space, watch our website towards the end of the year and you, you might see something of interest okay. there. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll look forward to seeing that. <laughs> also as well, what do you enjoy most about coming to these events and particularly this data center 2000? Oh, user questions. Un unquestionably, the thing that is most interesting and most useful to me are questions from people who are actually building the data centers and the networks that serve them. Their questions and their actual problems are, uh, are very, very interesting and useful to me. I, you, I learn quite a bit about what's really happening today and I, I enjoy that quite a bit. Okay, thank you Len for joining us today and thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you.